everyone, my name is Rick Pasek, a fly fish fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today I'm going to share a, uh, a leech pattern that I've never shared before with anybody. Um, not sure really what to call it, I've always called it my black ice, I don't know. Um, but uh, this is a fly that I've been using for probably, I don't know, 15 years, something like that, and it's always been a, a, a decent producer for me, um, especially uh, when fish are are not biting they're really not uh not actively feeding this is one that kind of pisses them off a bit um and uh it, it's fairly simple to tie um <clears throat> and you can make this one as small or as large as you want so um yeah it's a it's a leech pattern so here we go <clears throat> so today i'm going to start off with a focus first of all um it's a um uh, must add uh, 2x heavy, 2x long R72. Um, so anything that's that's uh, 2x long like this, um, I prefer a wider, a wide gap. This one is a wide-ish gap. Um, I, I actually ran out of my uh, the Hens uh, BL724s. That's what I usually tie this on, but uh, that's okay. <clears throat> so basically, what we're tying is this. Okay, and. There's your underbody, okay? So it's a fairly simple tie, um, but yeah, let's get it going. So <clears throat> there's your hook. And uh, a Zebrafly Nano Silk and a 12 watt black. So we're gonna start with here. Get a good base on. Um, the fish really hammer the crap out of this thing, so I like making sure I tie this properly. So we're gonna wax that thread, not that really nicely on there um like i said they they hammer don't be don't be uh letting go on uh of your rod on this one don't be trolling it and not holding on to it and drinking your beer or whatever this is uh this is one they absolutely absolutely smash i've done really well with the trolling i've done really well with it casting um it all depends right so um what you want to do here so you can leave a little bit of a space here in the front like that now, I'm going to tie on some Palmer Schneel, okay? Now, <clears throat> you can pick up Palmer Schneel from a lot of different companies. Uh, they make it. Um, but I went over to Michael's, um, and if you're in the U.S., Joann's. If you're in the U.K. or anywhere else, there's other other uh, um, um, hobby shops and, 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 and stuff like that, or craft stores. And I picked up... Scrubby Sparkle, it's called, and it is 700 and no, 174 yards of this stuff. It's just, it's, just, it's an, my lifetime and few others actually worth of this stuff. And it like, it was like six dollars. So, <clears throat> so, gonna take it and I'm gonna just nip off some of these fibers just to, to make sure I expose that. Uh, center court I'm gonna leave like i said leave myself a little bit of a gap there just tie it on just a couple of turns again wax it because they smoke it so you want to make sure it's tied in right okay I come back again just want to make sure this is tied in really well one more time and back and then I'm just gonna about there. I want to stop. Actually, I could come even back just a couple more turns. So now I'm just gonna wrap my Palmer chenille. I want it facing backwards all the time, and that and touching wraps. You want the last one touching the, the next one up, right? So the, the next one back. So make sure you. Uh, I got some. How did I get that on there? There was something on my desk. There was a bit of thread. So just bring that forward. You want this nice and spiky. Okay. I'll stop it there. Lock it. Lock it. Lock it. Everything back. Three, four turns in front. Get this stuff off. It, uh, this stuff here is not quite as supple 
as the stuff, the actual Palmer chenille. I find this a little bit stiffer. And I actually, for this fly, I like that. Let's see if I can focus that just a tad better. So I like I like this 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 spikiness of it um, when it's for this fly, um, and I picked this stuff up a while ago. So it's yeah. Well, and you can see how big this this roll still is, and I've probably tied fifty of these, if not more. There. Okay. <clears throat> so now, piece of black marabou. You want one with not too thick of a stem. Okay. Grab it by the tip, stroke it everything, stroke everything back nicely, because you're going to be tying this in by the tip. So tie that in. You got to be really careful when you start with this, because it this these tips are pretty brittle. So to make sure you're not uh, you're not busting it. Now it does happen. You just have to retie it in. It's just what happens, right? So. Now I'm going to take off some of this fluff on the end just so it doesn't get in my way because I definitely don't need all of this feather. Sorry for putting my hand there. So now it's going to get really, see there you go, I pulled it a little too tight. That's fine. I'll back this off again, tie it in again. Um, it's going to get really messy before it looks good. Just so you guys know, be aware. Um, when Even you know when I'm tying it, when you're tying it, doesn't really matter. It's going to look pretty ugly. So just gonna stroke that all back. Just make sure I've got this all tied in. So now hopefully it won't break again. These tips and these this marabou is uh, pretty thin. So stroke all this material back and wrap it. Okay. Stroke all this material back and wrap it. It's gonna get caught and it's gonna get ugly and doesn't look good. Believe me, but it will when it's finished. Two. Depending on your marabou, do three to four wraps. I'm gonna pretty well stop there. I'm gonna get one more wrap, but I'm gonna take some of this excess off so I'm not tying it in and trapping it. So here we go. One more wrap. Then I'm gonna just wet my fingers just a bit, stroke this stuff back, lock it in. Stroke my stem back, lock that in. Okay, now I take my dubbing brush and I take the brush portion or a toothbrush if you've got one and just just get in there and just make sure that none of that marabou is trapped. Okay, then I'm going to take it all back, all of it. And I'm gonna pinch it to the length I want. Don't cut it, pinch it. So I want this about one and a half times shank length past, so about there. And I'm just gonna pinch it. Pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, don't cut it. Okay, so that's that portion. I'm gonna just tie this head down just a little bit because I'm gonna add my goose buyouts now. I actually got just a tiny, I don't know if you can see, ah, his focus doesn't want to, there we go, a tiny, tiny little piece of stem right there. See if I can nip that, doesn't really matter, but, no, I can't really get it. It's not a huge deal, but, oh, there we go. So, got most of it at least. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to take some Orange seems to be the one that works the best. I do it in a in a, a fluorescent green as well, but some orange goose buyouts. Try to find some that are in decent length. Okay. <clears throat> now you see with I don't know if you can see that, but you see how the goose buyouts got a natural curve. I want that curve going in, not out. Right, so. Again, I'm just going to wet my fingers. I want to try to get this marabou to not be so fluffy, just so it's not in my way as much. And I'm going to lay this down right in line with the uh, the shank. And I want it about 
to the barb where, or where the barb would be that long, maybe just slightly shorter than that. Tie that in, turn it, and I'm gonna do the same thing and then I'll show you roughly how long that is. Roughly there. And there's a little bit too much of an angle up. I want to down it a little bit. There we go. So you see it's kind of on the same line as the as the hook itself. Okay, so I'm gonna do this another half a dozen turns and then I'm gonna pull tight on my nano silk. I'm gonna grab a pair of tweezers. I'm gonna grab my goose by it nice and close and just tear. I'll see if I can do it with from your side and tear. Okay, and that just leaves a tiny little piece there. Man, I don't know why this thing keeps going out of focus. There. And then just finish off your head. You want a bit of a head here, nothing huge, but and then whip finish. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all wet. So there's my whip finish. Because right now it doesn't look like anything spectacular. It just looks like a big fluff of black, right? So now I'm gonna take it out and wet it. Just so you guys can see. Hold it by the hook. Now, obviously, that's not perfectly wet, but there's where she, what she looks like, right? You got a little bit of that, little bit of that black on the bottom, a little bit of the black on the top. I'm just gonna get that wet again. It's not really cooperating with me, but that's okay. There you go, right? And then that silver, that pearly, um, the the, the Palmer chenille pops through there and then you've got those uh those hot spot uh um goose by it and when this gets when this is wet and it, it gets nice and slick like that it just and, and, and it flows really nicely too you can leave it a little longer you can make them a little shorter i like them about that length maybe a little longer um but that's uh that's it so uh, here's another one that i tied yesterday just to show you that you get wet. See, and that body shows through. This, it, it, like I said, it's been a really good producer for me. So, alrighty. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give her a thumbs up. Um, if you've subscribed, awesome. Thank you. If you have not, consider doing so. Spread the word as well. Uh, I'm gonna try to continue to try to do three videos a week. Maybe gonna go down to two. I'm not sure. Let's see how busy I am at work. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I'll try to do that. And once I hit a thousand subscribers, I'll be doing a, uh, a giveaway of, uh, flies tied on this channel, as well as a copy of, uh, the two books I wrote, which is, you know, the, fresh, the freshman fly fisher's insect guide and the fresh, well, that one's really hard to see from there. The freshman fly fisher's, uh, uh, uh fly fishing guide. So, all right. Tie lines, everyone.